Welcome to the Awaken on Purpose podcast, where each week you'll hear inspirational stories of heart-centered leaders who have awakened to their higher purpose and taken that leap of faith to follow their heart and make an impact in the world. Get ready to be enlightened, empowered, and transformed with your host, Jennifer Spohr. I'm really excited and just really overjoyed to welcome my friend, Chef Ronaldo Linares, as a guest to our show today. He's the author of Saboris de Cuba, a diabetes-friendly traditional and Nuevo Cubano cuisine, and America's leading expert on healthy Latino cooking. Welcome to the show, Ronaldo. I'm so happy to have you. Hi, Jennifer. Uh, pleasure to be here. Thank you for that kind introduction. Um, and it's always fun to speak with you. And congratulations on your podcast. It's oh, awesome. thank you. Thank you so much. I'm I'm so happy to have you here today. And I know that that our listeners want to know what inspired you to do the work that you're actually doing today. What prompted you to to take that journey to go from where you were to where you are now? Uh, I would say the people. The people, you know, motivated me to do it. My, you know, being community oriented. It was natural for me to do it. You know, years back, I, I walked into a hospital to uh, for a make a wish for a kid that wanted to cook with me. And uh, walking out of the hospital with the nurse, you know, we saw a young kid come out of his room and his left leg was missing. A young, young kid. I asked the nurse what happened to him. She said type 1 diabetes had a cut off his limb um, due to complications. And I started to think, because during that time, I was, you know, starting to think about being a father and all that. And, you know, diabetes runs wild on the Latino and uh, and the minority population, you know. And it's something that is is a disease, you know, and it's spreading pretty quick. So I I wanted to do something about that and and to bring with my book, to bring in a that flavor of of our ancestral cooking, ancestral flavors, but do it in a way where you could still have it in a healthy manner, in a tasteful manner. Because again, that's the the key thing, especially for Latinos. You know, we don't mind eating healthy, but it better taste good, right? Absolutely. I mean, I I know for myself, right, and and so many other people that I know, it's so much easier to eat healthier when we enjoy what we're eating. And I think that's the case with whether it's working out or anything else, we're setting ourselves up for success by, you know, looking at doing something that, that we actually enjoy. hundred percent, a hundred percent. Definitely. I think being able to eat in a manner that is delicious, in a manner that is prepared in a way that is good for you. It's a win-win, you know, there's not nothing to lose there. The only thing to lose there is the pounds, you know? Absolutely. And our mind, body, spirit, everything is connected. So when we are putting healthy things into our body, it also, I feel, contributes to our overall spiritual, emotional, and mental health. A hundred percent. I I agree with you a hundred percent. You know, myself being, being a, uh, I would say still being an athlete, because uh, that never stops. And being a, a father to two children that are very young, a husband, ha- my health has to always be on point. And, and that just is not with, you know, eating a, a proper balanced diet. And, you know, it goes as far as writing down uh, all, you, all that you're eating, making sure you're keeping track of it, that you have a, a, a regimented exercise uh, schedule, that you're surrounding yourself with the right people who are pushing you. Because at the end of the day, Without your health, you know, that is your biggest currency, right? You're able to, to live better, live longer, and, and focus uh, on your profession better, on your education, and on your family a lot better. Absolutely. And our health and, and being healthy allows us to actually expand our capacity to, to give back to others as well. You know, and, and I think in, in that line of work that you're in and, and that line of work that I'm in, you know, being a advocate for the American Diabetes Association, being a, a spokesperson for the American Heart Association. And when I have to go out and speak, when I have to be in front of people, I have to make sure that I present myself properly and that I'm living that life. You know, it, it would be a hypocritical of me to be going around and, and doing this this talks when I don't look the part, you know. Uh, and like, again, a lot of people do that. A lot of people I've seen 
talk about living a certain lifestyle, but you could clearly look at them and they're not living that lifestyle. So, you know, I, I chuckle at that. I chuckle at that because they're throwing a rock with the right hand, but they're doing something else with the left hand, you know? Absolutely. You know what? That's an excellent point that you bring up because, and and if this is not your area of expertise, <laughs> please feel free to let us know. But especially with women, and I've experienced this myself, I can tell you that for myself, you know, I strive to live a healthy life, mind, body, and spirit. But that yes. as we age, um, sometimes our bodies change and the same yes. thing that used to work doesn't work before. What would you recommend for, for that person? I think for that, I think for, for that, you know, and, and, and in men, the men, it happens the same thing in men, you know, certain things, both for women and men don't work the, the right way as you get older. But what you could do is preventative care. You know, mm -hmm. you could open up books and, and, and read on, on those things, right? On those things that are that are failing you or you're not feeling as spunky anymore. You know, um, it's to me, it's all on what you're eating, the type of vitamins and minerals that you're taking. You know, I, I carry about a 90% plant-based diet and I've been doing that now for probably a year. And, you know, that is, I, I mean, to me, I think that's the for me personally, is the best way to go. I still have my 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 meat and and all that, but when I do, it's high quality, proper meat that's been raised the right way, and the, and also the poultry, pasture raised, open in the on a, raised in the open field. You know, all those things matter when you're putting in your body. So as far as having that vigor, right, that energy, it, it's all on uh, on the preventative care, exercising, uh, being able to continue that, that blood flow through the body and replacing old blood with new blood, and that happens through all this through doing you know, yoga, through uh, physical fitness, whatever that is, that whatever that is to you, you know, it could be a walk every day that, you know, maybe a couple of lunges or for me, I, I take it to the extreme level and also eating. What, what are you eating? What are you putting in your body? You know, your body will react to what you're putting in, you know, and, and I could attest to that. I'm, I'll be 40 next year and I work out with some, some pretty young people, man, I'm in their thirties, some in 25, 24. And I'm able to not only keep up with them, but 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 also outperform them at 40 years old. So it, to me, you know, I I'm a living proof of that preventative care. And if you do that every day, and and you make it a a part of your day, you know, a, a non-negotiable, you will be okay. You will be okay. That's fantastic advice. Thank you so much. Every experience in our lives serves a purpose and shapes who we are. What experience in your life do you feel has been significant in shaping who you are today? Man, Jennifer, let me tell you, there's so many experiences, so many things at, at different parts of my life. Uh, and, you know, I know we don't, we don't have time for that. So one of, like, one of the things that honestly has, has shaped and, and has been a driving factor for my decisions lately I, I, I has to be my, my two sons and my wife. You know, a year ago, I decided to step away from the family business. I decided to step away from a very nice salary. I decided to step away from all that and, and go into a new role to, you know, open up my company, Ronaldo Linares. You found that RonaldoLinares.com, you know, providing brand experiences, brand services, you know, being a spokesperson for, like I mentioned earlier, the AHA, the ADA being a brand partner with the Health First uh, insurance company back in uh, about a year and a half, two years ago, and continuing to build all the relationships, doing in-home private services, private uh, being a private chef for private clients, and, and making their life better, their health, their family, and their profession by taking, the, getting, giving them time back, right? And I wouldn't have, I don't think I would have made that step, all of that I had in my head, if it wasn't for them, for Zane, for Liam, and for Lady, my wife. So becoming a husband and later on becoming a father and realizing that, you know what, my legacy is not the what's going to be left in my bank account. It's going to be left on what I did in front of my kids, in front of my wife. So when I step away from this world, they will leave their own legacy after what I did and what they saw me do as they were growing up. 
it takes guts <laughs> to do what you've done. <laughs> Oh my God, so much, so many. <laughs> it takes guts, and you know what? It takes a whole lot of heart. So I just want to thank you for uh, doing what you're doing. You know, you're really just bringing a lot to the table in terms of helping other people. Yeah, no, definitely guts is guts is right. Uh, it, it takes a lot. I mean, I I may met, you know, and it's not the first time. I've done plenty of decisions throughout my life that have taken big steps and, and have to uh, make a lot of people unhappy. But I think this was the biggest one so far in my life. And uh, it's been, um, it'll be a year in January and it's, it's been, uh, it's been hard, you know, it's not easy, easy at all, you know, building pipe, you know, learning a lot of new things, but I've been able to adapt and overcome a lot easier than I would if I would have done this years ago, you know? So it's definitely good and it's fun, but the biggest reward has been, growing that relationship with my kids and, and taking me and my wife's relationship to another level. You know, our relationship was great b before. It was amazing. Uh, you know, even though I was not home, me and my wife were, we understood the mission. She understood the mission and I had to change that mission. Uh, and that mission needed to include her a lot more. And that's what I did. And our relationship has, has gone to another level, a level that I never thought it would, there was, right? You always think you're good, but, you know, you can always raise it. You can always raise the, the, the roof. You can always renovate the house. You can always put a new kitchen, a new floor. You can always do that. You know, you don't have to settle. And I think that's why we fail so much in this world, because we settle. We settle for mediocre. We got to stop that. We absolutely do. And, and it's because, I believe it's because most of us are conditioned. I mean, you know, all of us, to an extent, are a product of our environment right and and so by default we have limiting beliefs because it's kind of like we know what we know and so a lot of us are conditioned to believe that life has to be this cookie cutter approach and so we spend more of our time and energy focused on fitting essentially a square peg into a round hole we don't think as much about well what brings us the most fulfillment and the most sense of joy instead we have a tendency to focus on what label we need to fit under if that makes sense yes complete sense complete sense you know we there's a there's a picture uh that was taken i think in this past year past year's olympics where michael phelps was leading his race and you saw him focus and then the picture the gentleman to the right of him is in i mean talk about during competition right they're in mid-stroke they both have their head popped out. Michael Phelps' head is, you know, aimed at the mission, at the target. Like, I know I need to get to the end of this, this pool and touch first. The other guy was looking at him mid-stride. And, and it's a perfect picture for what is going on today. And we all fall, and we all have felt, you know, fall, fall to that. In the past, I have fallen to that. Look out the chefs, see how they are and what they're doing and try to try to change who I am and, you know, when I was younger, I did that and, and it came to a realization, man, you got to stay in your own lane and build your own own road. And eventually, you know, that road is going to take you where it needs to go. You know, if you if you if you take someone else's road, it's going to take you to what they they're going to do. And you're never going to be fulfilled, happy or you're going to see you're never going to see your full potential. Literally just now when you when you referenced staying in your own lane, I was thinking exactly what you just said. Some of the best advice I've ever received on my path was to stay in my own lane. I mean, the billions of us on the planet, every one of us is unique and special and different. So comparison is it's kind of insane. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and we and it's crazy and everyone does it. And it's OK. I mean, it's not I mean, it's. It's a, it, I think to an extent, it's good kind of to take a look around and be like, and not so much compare yourself to that individual, be like, all right, what are they doing that I'm not doing? You know, oh, what they have, oh, they have a morning routine. Okay. They journal. Okay. They do X, Y, and C. They read a book and then they dissect it and they apply it to their life. Okay. They're, they're waking up an hour earlier than me. Okay. Maybe I could adapt those things, right? Those, those are okay. But still, you have to make sure you stay on your road, right? Absolutely. We talked about, you know, how much faith and, and how much guts it takes to, you know, pursue your own path to pursue those dreams. 
there are definitely a lot of other people out there right now potentially listening who are in that place at that crossroads of feeling like they're called to do more and make a bigger impact. What actionable piece of advice could you provide for those people who are feeling that call to make a change? I think like the, the best actionable piece of advice and where I've heard it too from, from other uh, leaders in our industry, you know, Tony Robbins and, and Gary Vaynerchuk and uh, Anthony O'Neill and some other people, you know, it's something that I kind of applied to, to myself years ago. You know, when I, when I first uh, went on, on Food Network, on Chopped in 2011, you know, what, what I, my reasoning to go on that was just to uh, promote the restaurant, market the restaurant and get people in the door. But what I noticed from that, that was, you know, I had a good charisma on camera and, and good media sense and talking to people. And so I started to work on that on the side and growing that on the side. And I did that for years, you know, for six, six years until we left the restaurant because um, I knew that wasn't going to be forever. And I and it wasn't it was my passion, but it was it was someone else's passion. I was doing it for my family. I was doing it to take care of help take care of them along with everybody else. And I needed to take care of my family, do something I love. So I recognized that and I worked on that and I built relationships and everything. When I felt that I was ready for it, I, you know, was, when I say ready, like as close to ready as possible, because you're never going to be 100% sure, right? So I jumped into it, you know, but I had already laid out a plan. I laid out the groundwork to make sure that. I wasn't going into something blind, and, and I used the network around me. I, I talked to the people around me. I got their advice. I stayed open-minded because that's the only way you're going to succeed, to be able to listen to other people that are doing it better than you, that are doing it at another level. So, you know, that that is my advice, advice to, to those that are finding there's something else that they could do, but not sure yet, you know, keep doing what you're doing and stay up that extra hour or two to figure that out. Wake up an hour early, work on it, and go to your regular work until you could feel sure enough that, you know what, I could make this happen for myself and then just do it. Do you agree that there's never a right time to make a change, though? Because there is, uh, as you said, right, is, you know, there's reflecting on when you feel you can look at making the transition, but there can also be perfectionism. Right. It's like it's yeah. important to have a plan in place to make the transition to pursue your yeah. path. But at the yeah. same time, knowing that you're never going to see 100 percent of the road ahead, you kind of just have to come up with a plan, trust the plan and then take that leap of faith. Right. 100 percent. There, If you get too involved in making it perfect, you're never going to do it. And replacing those negative thoughts, those negative phrases like. I'm never going to be ready. Oh, it's too hard. What if I don't make money? What if, what if I make this too hard on my family? You know, those are the, those, those you could turn into positive affirmations where let me get my family involved. Let me talk to my wife or husband or my loved one where this is my plan, right? Communicate with them, bring them in. This is what I want to do in two years. Help me with this. When you change that language up that little bit, your mind goes to another level. Where when that is, at times it comes time to make that decision, it's much easier to make that decision. And most likely you're going to be successful at doing that. I agree wholeheartedly. I mean, there is planning involved that goes into, you know, transitioning into a new career, starting a business or whatever path it is that we want to pursue. But I believe that, you know, some of that is logistics. I believe that like 90% of our journey is really mindset and faith. And so what you're talking about in terms of flipping the script on your language, I think is so, so very important. I mean, it, it does wonders, you know, and it, it little by little eliminates that inner critic, you know, that we all have is always telling you, putting you down or, or kind of putting doubt in your, in your mind. And the more you change that language, the more that inner, inner critic it, it becomes a, a, a life partner with you where it's kind of somewhat motivate you to do it right it's like when you were little and, and you wanted to jump off of the garage you know and that voice came up right it's, like, oh, it's too high but you were so sure because you were you didn't know better you know you haven't experienced that much failure in your life or none of those things you're like no no we could do this we can make this happen and three seconds later you were on the ground in a tuck and roll and you couldn't wait to get back up to that top of the garage to jump off again you know that fearlessness is what 
we lose because of life experiences. And if we're able to get that back, you know, imagine what we could do. I love that. I love that. So well said. Ronaldo, how can someone find you if they want to learn more about you and, and your journey and, and what you're up to? Because you're up, actually just up to so much more than even what we are able to touch on today. Uh, well, they could go to Google. The people could get if you're looking for a dynamic speaker, a leadership uh, a speaker specialized in servant leadership and also uh, as well as any people in the health space, definitely bring me in if you want to have an impact with, with, with the people that you're bringing in. You know, you go to my website, Ronaldo Linares, R-O-N-A-L-D-O-L-I-N-A-R-E-S.com. You could go there, find me there, and, and all my information is there from how to get in contact with me, what I do, my delicious food, and how we could work together. Uh, as far as my social handles, it's everything Chef Ronaldo uh, on Instagram, uh, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Uh, definitely you get me in contact through there. DM me. It doesn't matter. I will get back to you. And uh, if anybody out there in the New Jersey area, I am in New Jersey uh, or New York or PA, not an issue. I have a car and, uh, or a bus or however we get there. Thank you so much for being a guest today and for taking the time to speak with me. It's just always such a joy to connect with you. I just love your positive energy and thank you so much for, for just all that you're doing to help others. I oh, know for sure. Thank you for having me. And it's always, it's always good to speak with you. You have always uh, good energy, always good energy. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for listening to the Awake and On Purpose podcast. Please visit us and subscribe to the podcast at awakeandonpurpose.com so you never miss an episode. To learn more about how you can connect with your higher purpose and take that leap of faith to make your impact in the world, visit us at jenniferspor.com. And while you're there, be sure to join our email list for exclusive offers and a weekly dose of inspiration.